I'm John Eisenhower and I'm cheap. So that's why I'm here to talk to you about financial assistance today. If there's anybody you want looking out for your uh, financial assistance programs, both as a taxpayer and as a landowner looking for funding, it's somebody that's cheap. Uh, the person that hired me in this job said I love to play the call share game. And sometimes that's what it winds up being is kind of a, a game at, at times. But uh, I'm a technical assistance biologist. I work out of a, a area in our CS office, so under the Natural Resource Conservation Service, but I'm a state employee. And my primary job is working with farm bill programs and helping landowners to uh, enter into those contracts, work through the application process, et cetera. And with any free money, because that's what call share is about. It's all about chasing the dollar. I've got people, people in this room who I've worked with quite a bit on call share programs, both as a consultant, if they're consultants or landowners, and a few of them will still talk to me. Um, Brandon will call me every once in a while still. Tim Harris, he, he actually asks for assistance still sometimes. And, uh, Terry Sharp will call me, but Terry's the one that hired me in the position for, it's his fault if I screw up anyway. But um, the basis for, for Farm Bill especially is a good management plan. Nobody's gonna wind up happy at the end of the day if you start chasing money with cost share. So that's what I would really, if nothing else, about programs, acronyms, et cetera, just know that you need a good management plan and you shouldn't be letting the programs dictate what your objectives are as a landowner or what you're recommending to the landowner uh, as a consultant or, or a professional. We'll kind of start off with the easy programs and move to the slightly more complicated ones. Um, forest Development Program is administered by the North Carolina Forest Service. From a short leaf standpoint, they'll pay 60% of a, a predetermined prevailing rate for planting short leaf and 40% site prep. According to Mark Boss, there's now currently a, a backlog for that site prep money with short leaf planting under the FDP program. Also, it will pay 40% for forest stand improvement practices. One kind of reoccurring theme through the, the previous presenters have been, you can't just plant a short leaf and walk away from it. You can't just thin a stand and expect it to seed in naturally. It takes management to grow a short leaf stand. Forest stand improvement's very important. Again, just like the uh, site preparation money right now, there is a backlog for the FDP program for, for forest stand improvement practices. Those practices that can be funded under the uh, FDP program, non-commercial or pre-commercial thinning, release of seedlings, chemical release, prescribed burning and mid-rotation release. So uh, some chemical options to manage, some mechanical options to manage, uh, good opportunities there to help uh, nurse your short leaf stand along, along and uh, make it more productive for whatever your objective is. You also have the Southern Pine Beetle Program. And uh, one of the speakers was talking about the, the dense stands that come in whenever you're looking at natural regeneration of short leaf. This is a great opportunity to go in and use brush saw equipment to thin out these stands, get them back down to a stocking density where you're getting both some wildlife benefit as well as more aggressive and uh, productive uh, saw timber or timber production as well. It's gonna pay 50% of prevailing rate, 12 year old stand or less. It's gotta be a pre-treatment stocking of 700 trees an acre. So that's kind of the requirements for that program. And uh, last time I talked to Mark, he said there's good funding in that and still some opportunities to, to seek the Southern Pine Beetle program funding. One thing that's not in your packet, I, I did not put that slide in to last minute. Uh, the community protection plan. It's hard for me to kind of stagger through that because I call it the Stevens Amendment. That's what most of the Forest Service staff refers to it as. The Stevens Amendment pays for prescribed burning, or actually it, it conducts prescribed burns with no out-of-pocket cost to landowners. It does prioritize for urban interface uh, benefits and reductions. So that's kind of how they prioritize those fundings. It is a U.S. Forest Service program that is administered by the North Carolina Forest Service. That's who conducts the burns. And the purpose of that is to reduce the hazard reduction component around national forest lands. 
You can see in red, this is the, the boundary where the Stevens Amendment um, is applicable. It's a 10 mile radius of the National Forest boundary. So if you fall within this area, you want to check with your local county rangers, see what opportunities might be there to be able to get free fire lines and free prescribed burning um, in your forest stands. I told you we're going to go simple and get more complicated. So we have now hit the farm bill threshold. Um, FDP and, and several other programs administered by the state, you sign an application and within a, a few weeks, you know whether you're going to get funded or not, or you're going to be deferred till there's more money. The farm bill programs aren't exactly like that. Right, Brandon? <laughs> See, I told you he would talk to me sometimes, not right now. Um, one of the main programs that we use for forest management with the Farm Bill program is environmental equip, or excuse me, environmental equip. I've been in this job for 10 years. I only speak acronyms. Environmental Quality Incentive Program, or the EQIP program, and it is administered by the, the uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is a federal uh, agency under the USDA. From a short leaf management standpoint, there's lots of different practices that can be funded under EQIP. Um, it is ranked under the general forestry pool. So the 35 counties that I work in the, in the central part of the state is considered an area. The area gets a pot of money for forestry and all the forestry applications that are submitted within those 35 counties are ranked against one another. Um, we have a area forestry task force several members are here in the room today and we actually uh, propose and, and request certain ranking criteria for those funds that come to the Piedmont area. Right now management of, of short leaf is ranking very high as well as establishment of short leaf is ranking very high. Prescribed burning especially whenever it's multiple burns like Chris was talking about a single burning out has very limited benefit from a habitat standpoint but if you're gonna sign up for a contract to burn multiple times, you're gonna rank very high with the equip pool. And also forest stand improvement. If you're thinning, if you're releasing, all those things that the previous speakers have talked about being needed to manage short leaf are available and are ranking very high with the equip pool right now, especially in the Piedmont region. There again, a lot of the things I just spoke about that are practices that, that will qualify and, and rank out very well in the EQIP program. Pre-commercial thinning, release of seedlings, prescribed burning, establishment of short leaf. The way the ranking criteria is set up now, establishment of short leaf, hardwoods, cypress, uh, anything but loblolly is ranking out better than, uh, than those other species you know, right now. So definitely the uh, short leaf is, is ranking better from an establishment standpoint than Loblolly is right now with the EQIP program. Uh, mid story or mid rotation release and understory enhancement. If you had a stand that was thinned, maybe there wasn't a good seed source there for establishing some of that beneficial grasses and forbs, there are opportunities to go back into those understories and, and either plug in uh, native species or seed in native species to help kind of give that understory a, a jump start. Now the fun part. In your uh, packet you have a nice little black and white sheet there that talks about steps for assistance with the farm bill. Uh, you can save that for a bathroom reading later if you want to. You can take a quick look at it now. The take home message from this is do not expect to go into an NRCS office for the first time and be awarded funding in a few weeks, a couple months. It's going to take a while to get all the material together that you need to be eligible, but also there's only batching periods where funds are award, awarded once a year. So you're going to have to wait till all the applications come in, they're batched, they're ranked, and then you've, you'll find out maybe six months later that you got a contract. So. Um, Keep that in mind, as long as everybody's expectations are kind of at the same level, most folks don't get disappointed too bad. Right now? <laughs> Nell, I've worked with Nell, she'll talk to me still too. Farm and track numbers, have to have farm and track numbers to be able to qualify for USDA programs. 
You have to have a management plan. There again, most important take home message is get a good management plan that fits your objectives. Uh, you submit your application locally and you know you can kind of read through the rest of this because prescribed burning can be a challenge especially in the Piedmont uh, NRCS has started requiring that a, either a feasibility to burn statement or a prescribed burn plan is submitted with the application because if if you're a landowner and you sign a contract that you're going to do something and then you can't find a burner to carry out that burn it kind of falls back on you and there can be some uh, financial penalties associated with that. So uh, you need to make sure you have a relationship with a prescribed burner if that's the direction or one of the management practices that you're wanting to uh, submit an application for and that you can, you can communicate with that burner to find out, is it possible for me to burn? How likely should I even ask for these funds or not? Some other programs that are a little uh, more often used for other things, but can be used for short leaf. One is the, the CRP program, Conservation Reserve Program. Um, it, it would be more for crop field conversion. It has to have a cropping history, meaning it has to have had a crop reported at the Farm Service Agency office four out of the last six years to be able to qualify for CRP in the general sign up. Um, 10 year minimum contract, you plant at 400 to 500 trees an acre. This pays a annual rental payment for however many acres you sign up, as well as 50% cost share for site prep and establishment. So this is something that actually can offset some lost income uh, from taking agricultural land out of production and putting it into short leaf. We would have the opportunity in uh, CRP to go ahead and plant the, the understory between the rows. If habitat was a major concern of yours, we could actually plant the short leaf in rows between the rows, take a drill and plant native grasses, wildflowers, forbs, et cetera. So you can kind of skip some of the steps, especially in crop fields where farming oftentimes depletes the, uh, the seed bank. There's not a lot of good stuff left there to germinate. So sometimes it helps if we put some good native species back. So the CRP program can be used for that. Conservation Reserve Enhanced Program. Very similar in the requirements. It has to have a cropping history. CREP though is really based or, or designed to develop or, or to um, address water quality issues to take cropland out of production to protect water quality. So you're looking more at that riparian area, that riparian buffer Short leaf can be used as part of a CREP planting. There again, 10 year minimum contract. CREP contracts can actually even be permanent conservation easements. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of give and take in the CREP program that can help to, to match up with the landowner's objectives. There again, very similar with the planting density. With CREP, you get two times a rental payment. So you double the rental payment as an added in incentive to protect water quality. And if you go with a longer contract, you actually get a higher percentage cost share. So uh, if you went to a 30-year contract, you would get 90% cost share. 15-year contract would be 75% cost share. Um, so there again, if it's something that, that you were interested in, more details can be uh, found out on the CREP program. Partners for, Fish and, uh, Partners for Fish and Wildlife is a program administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There again, all the details are, are here, or at least the, the broad scope of the program is here. These projects are handled um, uniquely, would be one way to put it. Anytime you start managing endangered species, migratory birds, things that use small blocks of habitat, possibly very specialized habitats, possibly. It's hard to put a nationwide program together to address these resource concerns and these species. So there's a lot of flexibility with the partners program uh, as far as percentages that it pays, as far as practices that are recommended and paid for. Um, there again, you can kind of see in the background here, this would be something, uh, this is a, a, long, a short leaf savanna site, um, whether Rob thinks there were savannas here or not. I still like to install one every once in a while for uh, habitat purposes. But you know, to restore 
a short leaf savanna with the ground cover that would benefit ground nesting birds, migratory birds. This is a project that partners might consider helping out with in the Piedmont, North Carolina, in the short leaf ecosystem. Um, NC Ag Call Share, not traditionally thought of as a short leaf program, usually thought of as a converting crop fields to loblolly plantations. But you can plant short leaf with this program as well. There again is a crop field conversion uh, practice and program. It's administered by the county soil and water district. And the priorities for each county changes from one county to the next. So you need to check with your county to see if it's even an option to uh, do crop field conversion in your county. And finally, it's not exactly a call share program, but most everybody's familiar with present use value PUV program. A few years back, the legislature pre, uh, passed the Wildlife Conservation Lands Program, WCLP. Um, it gives landowners a very similar property tax break as those who are uh, producing an ag commodity, qualifying for agricultural present use value. Um, if they're managing for a priority habitat or a priority wildlife species. This requires a conservation agreement with the Wildlife Commission and it does require a minimum of 20 contiguous acres of habitat with no more than 100 acres being able to be signed up per landowner uh, per county. So if you, uh, part of your land's in uh, your name and part is in your name LLC, you could sign up up to 200 acres. So it is very specific based on landowner or by land ownership. I'm winding down. I don't think I took all my time. Do what? I'm just at it. I'm going to wind up perfect here. Here again, because we're from such a, a wide range of geographic areas, I didn't really get down to uh, who you should contact exactly. Just know which agencies are in charge of which programs. Um, and, and make sure that based on your objective that you are reaching out to the most equipped, uh, not equip, but equipped, agency and organization. You know, if you're habitat based, be a good chance to get some information and, and some recommendations from a wildlife organization. If it's production oriented, you know, you've got uh, the Forest Service, other, other agencies, organizations. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you know, you've got stewardship biologists and you've got both agencies that could actually uh, kind of tag team your plan to come up with something that meets your objective as a landowner. Because when that's overlooked, Nobody ends up very happy. And with that, when you're done, quit talking. And when Brooke says, you got no more time, you're done whether you got anything else to say or not. Thank you very much, and y'all enjoy the rest of your day.